This video covers the measuring goals feature that's built into SPED forms. The ability to measure goals is one of the most useful features within SPED forms. Unfortunately, it is also one of the most underutilized features within SPED forms. Therefore, the purpose of this tutorial is twofold. Number one, to demonstrate how to track and measure goals within SPED forms, and number two, to share the reasons why you should be using the goal measurement feature. The legal requirements. The requirements to uh, measure progress and to report it periodically to parents is spelled out in the 34th Code of Federal Regulations, Section 300.320A3. It tells us that we must measure progress towards meeting the annual goals and report it periodically to the parents, uh, and they suggest that it be done concurrent with the issuance of report cards. The Minnesota requirement is spelled out in Minnesota Rule 3525-2810A9. It basically says exactly the same thing as the federal requirement, just using different wording. Here we see the goal page from SPED forms. Now I've created a goal for a fictitious student named Egbert. I've written a brief PLEP statement, three sentences, a measurable goal, and three objectives or benchmarks. We're going to use SPED forms to measure Egbert's progress towards reaching this goal. I begin by clicking on the measure goal. When I do so, this screen will appear. Now the first thing I'm going to do is select the type of measurement that I'll be using to measure Egbert's progress. Now what I really want to use is Dibbles, but it's not on this list. So I am going to click on edit my custom options. This screen will appear. I'll add a new entry. I'll type in Dibbles as the value scored, stored and Dibbles as what will display on the IEP. And I'll click Save and Close. When I return, my dropdown now includes Dibbles. Now, in terms of what type of measures I can use, Anything that I can count, that I can measure, whether it be words per minute or I'm using percentages, anything that is countable can be used within this measuring goals feature of SPED forms. And uh, that's why we've given the ability to edit the custom options that you can write in there how it is that you're counting or measuring whatever it is that, that you have in your goal. So now I'm going to choose Dibbles. Now you'll notice above where it says progress reporting, the goal has been automatically entered. Now the next blank is I, the ultimate score to achieve the goal. Well, my goal says that it's going to increase reading fluency from 32 to 114 words per minute. So my achievement score is 114 and it's going to be achieved by April 2022 when this IEP uh, needs to be rewritten. So I'm going to add the date 4-12-22. Next, I'm going to add the baseline score and the date that that score was obtained. And you can see where the arrow is over on the left that on 4 21 I obtained a baseline Dibble score of 32. Now, there's a place there to where I can enter the time of the day that the score was obtained. That is optional. It does not have to be filled in. There's a place for a comment. It is to be filled in only as a reminder. This is something that occurred on that particular day that I need to be aware of. It could be that there's no score that day because the child was absent. It could be that the child did poorly that day because they were feeling uh, ill and or whatever or something else was going on uh, a christmas party uh, 
and you know the child's attention was not doing well on whatever it is you were measuring. So as you can see on 4221, I have a score of 32 and it serves as my baseline. Next, I'm going to continue entering weekly Dibbles scores. And so on the 16th, he got a score of 34, the 23rd, 36, the 30th, the 36 again, and on the 507, he got a score of 37. Now, when I click save, SPEDFORMS will graph the results for me. Now, the green line at the top is the IEP goal, and you can see that it's at 114. The red line is the target line. That is where I would like my scores to uh, be at so that if I continue along that path, I will reach that goal of 114 words per minute at the end of the IEP. The blue dots are the scores that have actually been entered. So those are the four scores uh, that have been entered. And the gray line shows the trend. This is what is predicted in the future if the current rate of change continues. Now this trend line shows us that on our current trajectory, we will not meet the goal at the end of the IEP. For that reason, I'm going to write in here that we're discontinuing the pencil trap intervention. And you'll notice that up here, I indicated that we that's the intervention that we were in fact using. Because I'm not projecting to be successful, I'm going to try a different intervention beginning next week. So I'm going to continue entering weekly Dibble score. On the 14th, I get 40. And you can see there that I have now begun the read, 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 read intervention. I've then I got a score of 44, 49, and 53. And when I click Save, SPEDFORMS now creates a graph with the additional data. And as you can see, after implementing this read, reread intervention, Egbert's scores have gone up and my trend line now actually exceeds the target line, suggesting that there's a very strong possibility that not only will we meet the goal, but we could actually exceed the goal. So after implementing the new intervention, Egbert's progress improved. The trend line now suggests he will meet or possibly exceed his reading goal. SPEDFORMS will use this data to generate the progress report. And if you notice down here, this took us to the end of the quarter, time to do a progress report. Now, as Egbert is currently on track to achieve his reading goal, we're going to check that he's making adequate progress. And you can see the check box there in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. We're going to add a brief comment in the progress data field. Simply, Egbert has made progress since implementing read to reread intervention and is on track to achieve his reading goal. Now, the next thing I want to do is click Save. I want to save this information that I've just entered. And now, when I click Print, SPEDFORMS creates a progress report with the grade, with the graph, I should say. Now, our experience has been that when you give this to a parent with the graph, it helps them to immediately understand the type of progress that their child has made, or if they're, if they're not making appropriate progress, what the problem is. It ends all miscommunication. If you have a parent who tends to disagree or not uh, be compliant in understanding what's happening, giving them the graph to look at tends to just make things much easier, much more palatable, if you will. Uh, it, it is really a game changer when it comes to working with parents 
and helping them understand what is happening in special ed. Thus far, we've generated graphs depicting the annual IP. That is, the graph covers the entire IP timeline from uh, its start when the baseline to April 2022. However, we can also generate a graph that is just based on the time frame that we have collected data. To do that, we're going to click on the show collective time period and now we get a graph that represents just the time period for which we have collected data. Now there are times when this is very appropriate but one of the things we've lost is we've lost that ability to see that trend line out into the future. And so uh, this is something I think you want to use with caution because that trend line uh, tends to be a really important feature when you're talking with parents and even some general ed teachers. And when I click print, I get a, I can get a progress report based on that same shortened time period. Some tips and tricks. In most instances, measuring and reporting progress based on the goal is appropriate. As I've mentioned, when you go to the shortened time period, you, use, you lose the ability to see that trajected, trajectory into the future and what's going to be happening in terms of a trend line. To generate valid and reliable graphs for progress reports, data must, be re, must minimally be gathered on a weekly basis. Now, if you figure an average quarter is about nine weeks, that gives you nine data points. Scores reported biweekly or monthly simply don't provide enough data points to generate valid and reliable progress report graphs. Monthly, you'd be looking at three data points. Biweekly, four, maybe five. However, there are situations when it makes sense to measure progress by objectives. To do that, you click on the measure objectives. It will look exactly the same and work exactly the same as measure goal, except atop, it won't list the goal, it will list the objective. You'll enter the starting point for the objective and you'll enter the end point for the objective. In this case, I would be talk about 15 single digit multiplication problems with 100% accuracy. I don't happen to have an ending point on here. Now, for example, when it's appropriate to measure using objectives are when the criteria or the complexity of what is being measured changes with each objective. And this is an example of that. Let me explain. If you look at objective one, it talks about single digit multiplication problems. So over a nine week period, it is very possible that this particular student might get 100% on five consecutive trials using single digit multiplication. Once we've done that, we move to objective two, which is one and two digit multiplication numbers. Soon as we do that, it's unlikely that he's going to continue to score at 100%. He might drop all the way down to 30% for all we know, and then start building back up. Now, the end of the second grading period, when objective two is complete, he might be at a high level again, 90 or 100%. And we move on to objective number three, which is one two and three digit multiple numbers. Again, it is likely that his score is going to drop, could drop to 30 or 40% or whatever. And so what you end up with is a graph that looks like, like a sawtooth if you're using the yearly graph. In a situation where each of the objectives really is a different sort of a set of problems in terms of their complexity, it is very appropriate to measure performance based on objectives.
The other time it's really appropriate is when you're measuring something on a daily basis. That's not uncommon when you're measuring be daily behavior. Uh, it's also very common in uh, level four programs of all types. Now, if you're measuring something on a daily basis, you could create a weekly average, put it on the measure goal and, and, and measure it that way. But if you are in fact going to record on a daily basis, you might find it's easier to use by measuring an objective simply because if you're going to be measuring for the whole year, you're going to have as many as 180 to 190 data points. And that's going to crowd that graph so much um, that it becomes almost impossible to read what's going on. So at that point in time, rather than having 180 or 190 data points, you're probably better off either combining to do weekly or going to uh, uh, simply object, uh, measuring the objective. If you need to write a comment that requires more space than a data field provides, and that can happen all over SPET forms. There are numerous places where you're going to be adding uh, wording into a data field, and it is not uncommon that you want to write more than the size of the data field allows. Now, as you're going through SPED forms, you're going to see a lot of data fields that have those little hash marks down in the lower right-hand corner. That's an indication that if you click on those slash and drag down, you can actually enlarge the data field. I can't guarantee you it will become as large as, well, as being able to insert the great American novel, but it will be more than large enough for anything that you need to add. Next, when you need to add another score, but there's no more data fields. As you can see, when you first go in to measuring progress, you get three data fields. Well, you may have saved up a whole week or a whole month's worth of data that you're going to enter at one time. There's no requirement that you add it every day. When that happens and you need more than three data fields, simply save and three more data fields will automatically be added. That is true for the data where we're measuring goals. That is true other places within SPED forms where there are a limited number of data entry fields and you need more. Save and more will be added. If you have additional questions about measuring goals and objectives, please refer to the user guide where you're going to find step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. Again, I would encourage you to give this a try, particularly if you are already gathering data and putting it into some other format to save, why not put it in SPED forms where you can graph it and automatically create a progress report that you can hand to parents and have a visual. It is an incredibly powerful tool when it's used in that way. Good night and good luck. Thank you.